I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why is this joker showing us another normal skin? This is supposed to be pathology class. And I'll agree, this probably is normal skin. You can see soon, hopefully, that we have a reticular dermis here. We have part of a sweat gland. We have another part of a sweat gland. And we have at the top a rather a nice full thickness epidermis maturing from the basal layer to the stratum corneum. And occasionally these lighter cells like here, like here, like here, like here, is an occasional uh, melanocyte, which you would expect to see. If we move down the line a little bit, you will see that these melanocytes are a little bit more numerous. And here, most of these cells are melanocytes. Uh, and you're wondering, is this some type of uh, melanocyte proliferation? But what I want to direct to your attention, because it's so critically important, is that it looks like some of these melanocytes, like here, like here, like here, like here, may be moving away from their generally basal situation and going into the mid layers and perhaps even higher of the epidermis. This is called buckshotting because it looks like the epidermis is now buckshot with these melanocytes. And uh, just uh, to make you happy, we'll go up one more power here and we'll prove to you that they're melanocytes. I wish they had better pigmented granules, but they don't. But these are what classically with melanocytes look like. Because Melanoma is really the only practical skin tumor, common skin tumor, which a primary skin tumor, which kills people. The pressure to diagnose them in their early stages has been more and more and more over the years, and it has been extreme. And uh, there are several criteria and a whole wide variety of names that are getting to early or insight to melanomas, and I won't bother you with that. But what you, I will bother you with is one concept and only one concept alone. If you notice in the upper skin section here, we're looking at some increase in melanocytes. Let's go to the worst part, worser part. Let's go to the lower section. And you could see a thickened uh, stratum uh, corneum here. It's hyperkeratotic. Perhaps it's thick skin. Perhaps this was the... Uh, a uh, sole or a finger. Notice we have even more proliferated melanocytes. And in addition to that, some may very well look atypical, like here, like here, like here. Perhaps they're a little bit bigger and darker than they should be. And atypia itself within melanocytes uh, is uh, not good. It may be a precursor to malignant melanoma. But look, we definitely, which even is more upsetting, is the fact that there is genuine buck shotting here. Here's a melanocyte well within the uh, uh, spinous layer, the acanthotic layer, the stratum spinosum. So even though it's not atypical, it is definitely well within the middle of the epidermis. This is a very, very significant sign. And if you were to see a lot of this, you could definitely diagnose melanoma in situ. And here's another one. We are seeing more of it, aren't we? And here's a melanocyte that may be not far from the base, but it's certainly atypical and very bumpy looking. And here's a melanocyte that may be in mitosis. And here's another buckshotted melanocyte. And here is one also. So rather than go through a big list of a whole bunch of names, some of which are egotistical and named after people, let's just say that whenever you see uh, melanocytes increased, atypical, and especially buckshotting within the epidermis, you can suspect 
that early malignant melanoma is present or very soon to be present. And this case is called melanoma in situ. Notice these cells have not infiltrated yet into the dermis, papillary or reticular dermis, but it is felt that when you see changes like this, it's just a matter of time. Thank you very much.